Let's look at it. Just give me another one. Give me a different. Give me a. Give me somebody who's messed up. Okay, so looks like we got a young lady here. Go ahead and throw up the grass here. All right, so let's look at the sequence first, right? So I'm looking to see. Perfect. I'm just going to see which peaks first. So go ahead and start going. Okay, so I look at this and I go, was that her peak right there? Wrong way. There we go. Oh, okay. So, all right, I didn't even know that was the peak because it didn't even look like, okay, what, what is, what's her number? So she does peak lateral first, but it's 4% of her body weight. What's, what's the level? 23. I'm like, it didn't even look like a peak to me. I was like, I, I was waiting for the peak. I'm like, it's actually there. She's just not going lateral. Right, so this is somebody who there's really not a, a, a really aggressive weight shift there. There's her peak lateral. Looks like there's something else going on over here. We can look at that in a minute. But okay, that's first. Keep going. Okay, now she does twist next and she does go vertical last, right? So she actually does have the right sequence. I just don't see a lot of magnitude in the lateral, right? If I go to the vertical, what's her, ver her vertical is at 134%. I told you PGA Tour 198. What's LPG? I'm looking for at least 165, 170. Right, so I look at this 135, I'm like, magnitudes are low again, right? So somebody's not using a lot of force. Now, a lot of times what you'll see on some players is they have one superpower, right? Everything's in sequence, timing looks okay, the magnitudes are great, but one of them is like, their vertical is like 300%, the other words are low. You can get away with one superpower, right? There's a lot, I always think of like, all the superheroes out there, some people just have uh, the ability to be invisible, some have just, uh, you know, the, the one power is good enough, right? You can get... If I look at Jason, it's not good enough. He needs all three of them, right, if he wants to compete at that level. So now let's talk about the torque number. How many of you guys are confused when you hear torque? Okay, so being, someone's being us. So here, let me, let's talk about torques real quick. When I look at, or look at the three plates, right, you've got two numbers that you're looking at, forces and torques, right? A force is, just imagine if I, if I push into your shoulder and I push with 10 pounds, that's a force going this way. If I want to know how much did I twist him, how much did I create a twisting or a turning motion? That's a torque, right? Best way an example of this is like a door. If you have a hinges on a door, then you have a door handle. If I take the door handle and I push the door handle at 10 pounds, and let's say the door handle is two feet away from the hinges, to calculate the torque, all we do is we take how hard you're pushing, let's say 10 pounds, times the distance from the hinges, two feet. So 10 times two is, that's 20 foot pounds of torque. So you take the force, times the distance away from the center of rotation. That's called the moment arm, right? That's called the torque, right? If I want to increase my torque, I got two ways of doing it. How do I do it? I either push harder, instead of pushing 10 pounds, push 20 pounds, or skip, make a wider door, get farther away, bigger hit, like if I get three feet away, right? I want you to know, this is some of these guys' superpowers, right? Here's what, they'll, here's what you'll see with Jason. He'll get to the top, right? And let's say we're looking at, and I don't care which torque you're looking at, horizontal torque, frontal plane torque, it doesn't matter. Like the, these guys are amazing at doing this. What they'll do is, let's say I go to the top and I push with the same amount of force he does. Okay, so let's say we both push with 20 pounds of, uh, of force. But my moment arm, because the way I swing, is two inches, and his is 12 inches. He's going to hit six times more than we have a torque just by changing the moment arm. So let me, I know that's kind of, it sounds weird. It sounds easy with a wrench, but how do you, what's the moment arm in golf? Let me explain that for golf real quick. And then so when you're creating these ground reaction forces, you have a reaction force coming into your body, right? And then we can all do this together. If that reaction force goes right through the center of your body, it's going right through the center of rotation. You're not creating a torque because your moment arm zero. So watch, everybody put your feet together, put your feet together. And now push down and push down into the ground. Just push down the ground. What did you do? You went up. You pushed down, you go up. Did you twist at all? You didn't twist at all because the force, the reaction force, goes right through the center of your body, right? There's really no twisting, right? If instead, if I said, hey, here's the center of your body, and I don't want you to push the force through the center of your body, I want you to push the force, the force along the side of the ground. So if I said, hey, take the carpet, slide the carpet to the right. If you, if you, I'm going to try and push the carpet to the right. Push the carpet to the right. Right here, put your feet. Push the carpet to the right. Try and take the carpet and move it to the right. Try and slide the carpet. Try and slide the carpet. Slide the carpet. Which way do you move? If I push this way, I go this way. What's this right here? That's a twist. I'm actually torquing. I'm torquing. I'm not going up anymore. Because the force is not going through the center of my mass. It's how far from the center of my mass? It's like two feet, three feet from the center of my mass. So now it's creating a torque around my body, right? So if you think about how do you create twisting? I'm gonna take my right foot 
and push this way, my left foot push this way, those are not through the center of my mass, they're on the sides, and it creates a twisting torque, right? We can actually measure how you're doing this from the right foot to the left foot to see how you're creating these torques. So if you're not following me, I'll make it even a different way. When I look at torque, okay, if I look at torque, I told you 23% is percent of your body weight is lateral. Torque is 19% of body weight. If I see your torque is 10%, it's low. It's either low because you're not pushing hard enough or you have no moment arm. You're, not, you're pushing through the center of your body. We can actually dissect this and we can go look to see, is it the force or is it the moment arm by looking at the data on the force weight? Because here's what, in my opinion, if you want to change force, if your force is low, you need to learn how to push harder. When, what's he done really well? He's trained to be able to push harder, right? If you push really hard, but you have low torque, well, now you don't know how to get your forces away from your center mass. That's a teaching problem. That's a coaching problem. We can actually determine if there's a little bit of a training problem versus a coaching problem based on low and arm versus force magnitudes, if that makes sense for you guys using plates. Think about this. If you're going to create a torque, another one last little thing that I'll turn to a little thing that we see very common on torques. If I was going to take, let's say I take a rod and I'm going to twist the rod, right? I'm going to pull with my right hand, push with my left hand. I'm going to do this. Would it spin the fastest if I first pull with the right and then push with the left? Or would it spin the fastest if I did them at the same time? What makes more sense? Same time, right? If I take both at the same time, it's going to spin harder. If you look at most golfers, is this a good word? Perfect. So I take most of our golfers and I look at, this is the lead foot, right? There's the trail foot. So red is the trail, blue is the lead. I'm looking to see when she pushes, does she do this at the same time to create a lot of twisting torque? And you can see right here when the lead one's going, I still don't have maximum trail, so they're not exactly lined up. If I look at like the best players in the world, I mean, they are literally at the same time. All right, we see those people right at the same time. Right, so you saw me, he, this was uh, her speed that he first saw, and then he saw that they were not synchronized at the same time, and you trained them on, trained her on how to synchronize? Absolutely. Yep, and then let me see what happened. Let's see if he's any good. Let me see. All right, I mean, look at this now. You can see the red and blue are almost on top of each other. So now, look, I mean, almost peaking at the same time. So now, now, just by teaching her how to push at the same time, you should increase your torques, which should increase your speed. What's your speed now? I mean, look, look what happened to the speeds there too. I, I will tell you, it's, it's not magic. It's, it's physics, but you can literally go in and make, and we've seen in our power class, what are some of the like speed changes we've seen? Uh, 20 miles an hour? Right. Especially with the vertical, when they're really late vertical, we've, we've had guys that are above two or average, yeah. but even past impact. So they're, they're not getting that energy to the club. We move them, you know, somewhere that shaft vertical downswing, and it's very significant amount of club head speed and ball speed gain from that. Yeah.